Like now there was that one guy who just did a, a deal with the LA Dodgers, $700 million over 10 years, 70 million a year. <laughs> That's crazy, okay? So sports is a different deal. One of the biggest streamers right now on the planet is a guy named Connor Price, okay? He just raps, super cool. I really like the music. He's like top, top point, whatever, whatever percent. When I saw the numbers of what he was doing, I'm like, wow, like big red flag when selling your company. If you buy a company, that's the, worst, that's the worst that can happen? You lose all your money? Okay, cool. Well, you have another chance and you learn something. I, I've lost money, $2,000, $3,000, lost all the money. Okay, cool. Next. This is the Aaron Cordovez Show. Welcome to the Aaron Cordova Show, where I talk about e-commerce, Amazon, business, selling companies, buying companies, doing stuff that your parents will tell you you should calm down and relax. Take a normal job instead. This is what I talk about because you know what? I've shown my parents how it... <laughs> I've shown my parents that it can be done. It can be fun. I don't need to stress my life and I can make a ton of money. And so they're now okay with it. At the beginning, they were not. But I'll give you the permission to be crazy and do things that are not normal and instead meant to be extraordinary. All right, what is up, guys? Today, I'm giving a nice breakdown into buying companies, how you can invest with us if you're an accredited investor, how you can sell your company, what kind of companies we're looking to buy, but more importantly, the mathematics and the idea of buying and selling companies. It is an awesome, awesome thing for pretty much anybody who can do it to at least try it. And I've seen many people be very successful buying companies at a smaller scale, at a larger scale, and also people who have failed just like anything else in life. Anyway, this is a deep dive into the acquisition and the sale of companies and how we like to do it and what are the benefits and how does it look mathematically. Hope you guys enjoy. Big announcement. Uh, we have gone under a letter of intent for the largest company purchase we've ever done by a lot, by more than double our last biggest one, uh, which is crazy, like a massive company. And uh, <laughs> I'm going to talk about the story about putting this thing on a contract because this is the same story of the last one that we closed on had the same exact story. This is what happens. Okay. Some company goes and says, I'm going to pay you this amount of money. And it happens to be what people call like aggregator. Okay. And I don't know, I guess how much I can, how much I can talk about it. I guess I can't talk too much about it. Like exactly who it was. This is just one of the big dogs. Uh, but the company goes under contract and then here's what happens. Big red flag when selling your company. All right. The due diligence process takes a month, two months, three months, four months, six months later, they go, uh, sorry, we can't close on this deal. <laughs> not, not because they don't like the company, but because they have no funding. They have no money. They have no ability to close. Uh, either they're going bankrupt or who knows. But the last company that we bought, which is a, uh, was a killer deal, it's doing fantastic uh, for the investors, right? We have accredited investors who invest. They're getting an, an amazing, amazing um, deal out of it, okay? But that company was under contract, again, six months similarly around that, around that time period, didn't close. And then now we come up and we go, hey, we're going to close 30 days. And people go, what? Okay, let's do it. And here's the thing. We've done it. Last We closed. I think we money money went to escrow in 21 days, something like that, around, around that time. We're doing the same thing again right now. Now, it is a fantastic company. And what occurs is these guys go under contract and they go, hey, we've heard news about you and this and like, I don't think you're going to be able to close. Like, isn't, aren't you in trouble? And they're like, no, we promise you we're going to get into it. We're on it. We're going to close. We're fantastic. And they do a lot of talk. And then what happens in that due to diligence phase, these people take long and long and long and then they give up some random excuses. And then for sure, lo and behold, sorry, we can't close. This is a, a horrible experience for sellers. But in a way, for people like us that are buying, it, it might be good because what happens is we go, hey, we'll close in 30 days. And then people go, for real? And then now, now we have a reputation with brokers, with different people that we actually close quickly. And so uh, we're able to uh, put this deal. It's looking really good. Again, it's not closed. We hope it will be. And I want to talk about this industry because I look at, 
I learned, I learned something about we have like famous people and artists, uh, and people who kind of make it big, famous wise. And then you have business, and you have money, and generally speaking, you make so much more money uh, doing business because if you look at like an artist, okay, I, I just uh, was talking to a guy, and some some inside data. Again, some stuff that I, I don't know how much I can share, but let's just say a big streamer such as, you know, um, one of the biggest streamers right now on the planet is a guy named Connor Price. Okay. He does raps uh, on Instagram. Like, I follow the guy. He's super cool. I really like the, the the music. And he's one of the mass. He's like top, top point, whatever, whatever percent. Now, he honestly doesn't make a whole lot of money. Like, relatively speaking, I know many people who do e-commerce and this is sell way more than the guy are not nearly as famous. The guy has, I don't know, billions of downloads, uh, these events, concerts, everything. And like when I saw the numbers of what he was doing, I'm like, wow, like we're making more than this guy, which is, which is cool for us, I guess. But it gives a concept that in terms of how much a person spends, if you think of like an artist, even... I mean, movies less so because I guess you pay and you, a lot of people see a movie and they each pay 15 bucks or whatever and it's more. But like music, how much money do you pay for music? It's relatively small, right? Like how much, like a, a, an example is like, I don't know, um, Rolling Stones or something or whatever artist, whatever band, like how much money have you actually paid to that band? Like on Spotify, you they see millions and millions and millions and millions and millions, tens of millions, hundreds of millions of listens and they get like very little money. So in the end, where do they make their money? And a lot of times, the guys who make it big make their money on products and make their money on business, right? You take Rihanna. She became extremely, extremely wealthy through her line, right? Uh, um, Savage by Fenty, right? It's like a lingerie line, line uh, which is a partnership with LVMH. Uh, you know, one of the top 10 richest guys on the planet, uh, Louis Vuitton. Um, LVMH, what is MH? I don't even know, but whatever. Uh, Louis Vuitton and that guy. So... She makes way more money on products. Same thing with the Kardashians. They're big, whatever. But how did this Chloe? I think it was Chloe that made all her money, was through her mascara line. She did a mascara line, and through the product, boom, that's like a billion-dollar brand in a second with all the fame. So people who get a lot of attention, they don't really make it big until it merges to a product. Same thing with Michael Jordan, best, you know, greatest of all time basketball player. This super famous. He did not make a bunch of money until he did the deal with Nike. I mean, actually, never mind. Okay, sports guys, they make money on contracts, but I think even his stuff wasn't too big. Like, now there was that one guy um, who just did a, a deal with the uh, LA Dodgers, $700 million over 10 years. Okay, $70 million a year. <laughs> That's crazy, okay? So sports is a different deal nowadays, but you make a lot of money on sports with directly from the, the teams, not, not music. Um... But prob I mean, I don't know. That's a crap. I mean, that, that kind of money, I don't know. I don't know if I'll make that, like, in my lifetime. Uh, uh, that's, I mean, I might. I don't know. So I have to say, I have to put it in there that I, that I will. Okay, it's a boom. 70 million a year. Okay. Bottom line. All right, let's see if I get there. That's crazy, though. But I, I still believe even, that, even with that, who knows? His partnership deals might even pass that. This is, like, top level. I don't even know the guy's name. I found out about him when I heard that deal. So, back to the point. Buying companies is one of the most profitable activities in the world because it's all math game and it's a numbers game, right? And and um, I went to a, a seminar, okay? Here locally, there was a guy named, uh, I want to say his name is Joe Sakela. And he had a, a he was making a, a marketplace, like a stock exchange platform. And it was, normally in the stock exchange, you have to be above like, I don't know, 100 million in revenue or something. It's like a big number. For you to go publicly traded, like on the New York Stock Exchange or the NASDAQ or whatever, you have to be a really big company. It's like 100 million, some, some, some number like that, like mostly, mostly speaking. And most companies cannot get that. That's a very, very small percentage. However, when you buy and sell and you have interest in this, companies make a lot of wealth. So he was doing this little company that was like, hey, if you do a million dollars or 4 million or whatever, you can actually go public on this thing called the Dream Exchange. It was a cool seminar really nice. Here's the mind-opening, eye-opening moment at the Dream Exchange Seminar. The guy was talking about return on investment, okay? Typically, like, I, I love math. I love doing numbers. I like, you know, playing around with them. And he taught me this one information, which is so important in investing. And it is your return on your money. Right now, because the interest rates are high in the world, 
uh, or at least in the United States, probably around the world, I don't even know. Actually, I don't really know. But around the United States, you put in uh, money to the bank and you'll get about 4% return on your money. 4%. Well, regular bank, you might get half of a percent. Or, but if you do like a, a money market account at, I guess, Merrill Lynch or uh, Fidelity or, uh, you know, some credit unions, you'll probably get like four. And I think the highest is maybe six where you just put money in the account and you get paid. That's return on investment, return on your dollars. It's dollar on dollar money. So you put in 100,000, right? And you should make, you know, four to 6,000 in that year. Good. In real estate, people make normally just, I mean, I don't know normally, but I know people who, let's say, make 10% on their money, 15% on their money, 7% on their money. Okay, cool. That's the return on investment. That's your cash you put in, right? And then how much that, how much cash flow that money will generate per year. So here is a piece of information. If you multiply, sorry, if you take the per, the per, the, okay, if you take the multiple of your payment on profit of a company, let's back up. I'm going to buy a company. The company makes $100,000 a year. Okay. We don't buy companies that size. They're too small and it's a little bit of a headache. And in fact, probably the worst purchase we bought was a, a small purchase. Um, because what happens, it's, it's sometimes it's not worth it to revive it, at least for us, like, if the thing goes down, why would you spend time reviving that when you do something new and you can make, anyway. Small companies, I don't really recommend buying um, unless you're really, you have a lot of work you're going to put into it and it's going to be a return for you personally, a lot of work in it, but I don't buy it. But let's just say, okay, back to the point. Let's see if a company makes $100,000 in profit, okay? If you buy it for three times profit, which honestly market right now, uh, getting a company for around three times its profit is that's about market rate okay some companies are going for a little bit less maybe 2.8 2.7 something like that uh and probably like top of the line top 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 i don't know three and a half four uh five is like whoa if you get five cash for a company right now that's massive and there's exceptions right so i'm talking about amazon like that's just what it's always going for some guys, if they have like uh, a lot of recurring revenue, it's not Amazon. They're in all the stores. They're in Amazon. They're in all, you know, retail. They're in international. They have a lot of distribution. They might get higher. So I don't know. I've heard of companies maybe getting six or something like that. Um, but typically it's not. Right now, if you get five, that's like a superstar. For real. Five. Like that's crazy. So let's say about average, which I, I want to say is around three uh, based on what I've seen around, around there. So 100K... How much did you pay if you pay three times the profit? It'll be 300000 Now, here's, here's a mathematical equation. You take one and you divide by the multiple you're paying. So one divided by three, okay? That is 33%. That is your return on your investment on your cash considering if that entity or that property, the business makes the same amount of cash, okay? 33% return. Now, I don't know about you, but real estate doesn't give 33%. I mean, unless, I don't know, I haven't seen real estate give you 33%. Um, loaning money, you know, even banks, they loan you money. They'll charge right now like 11%, 10%, whatever it is. They're not making 30%. Um, where, where do you make that money? In crypto, most people lose all their money, right? People who, people who make money in crypto is because someone else lost money. Like that, I've lost money. I have a negative return by a lot in crypto. So 33% return. You go, that is ridiculous. If the company goes down by half, in theory, you're still at like 16.5%, 16.7% or whatever it is. If the company goes by half, if you paid a 3x, that's ridiculous. That's even, that's like a really good return anyway. And if it goes down again, like you could withstand quite a bit and still have a pretty decent return as long as the company doesn't totally crash. Now, that, when I, when I, when I was at that seminar, my eyes were opened into buying and how nice and how amazing it is to buy a company. And it's also great to sell because if you sell, then you can make a thing again and you make it grow even faster. And anyway, that's the whole thing. Buying and selling both the activity itself can be very good if you do, if done right. If you buy a company for five times the profit, okay, one divided by five, that's 20%. 20% is the return on investment if you buy a company for 5X. What the hell? 20% is ridiculous. If you make 20% more, that's like so good. You pay 60. You pay a 10 times multiple, which is what things got up to. Why did companies like Thrasio uh, and, and Perch, I don't know if Perch did, but some of these big 
Amazon aggregator companies pay up to 10x on companies. Well, at that time, the interest rates were extremely low. People were getting interest rates, I don't know, the the, the 3% loans, 2% loans, you know, 5% loans. On a 5% is your return on the loan. The bank makes 5%. And if the company, you paid 10x, one divided by 10, you're getting a 10% return. So if, you're, if, you're, if you buy a company for a 10x, it gives you 10% return. You owe the bank 5%. In theory, you're still making 5% per year. Now, the problem with that is that people buy it on COVID, inflation. Um, they bought it on like these, this big overbuy on, in 2020 when all of those companies went down. Further, those interest rates that were 5% was variable, and a lot of them are now paying 10%, 11%. And then that would pass that 10x. But then even more importantly, and the big mess up was those companies, their revenue went down by half. The profit went down by 80%. Then at that point, you're, you're, you're screwed. You're in a terrible scenario. However, right now, 3x. You buy it for 3x. 33% return on the money. That's crazy. It means if you have a certain cash flow, you invest it. If the company even grows, I mean, it's just, guys, when I, when I look at the math on this, it's just like, it's just so cool. Now, you need to know, yes, you need to have the team. You need to make sure the company doesn't go down. You want to make the company grow. But if you can get a company that's been around for seven years, eight years, and it's been on a pretty good trajectory, just don't mess it up. Don't go and hire, you know, 10 times the staff to like grow it. No, keep it going. Keep going on the same trajectory it's been at. Do small changes. Don't do massive changes. And this applies to other businesses too, right? Just in the podcast, we had a guy who bought a, a thing for like one time multiple, Okay. And then grew it. It's like, okay, it's a great entryway into probably any type of business where something is established. A lot of service-based companies, because it's not really a business, sell for one times multiple. Why? Because let's say it's a chiropractic company. If the chiropractor stops working, it goes from making 200 grand to zero, right? So it's a job. It's not really a company. In in an Amazon-based company, uh, like if I didn't show up to work, I don't know, for like six months, uh, the company will not go to zero. The brand is there. The reviews are there. The ads are there. The team is there. Things are running. So it's not based on specifically me. Yes, do I have a job to make it grow? Absolutely. But these brands have use and, and worth outside of the operator, outside of that service person. So in a service-based company, a lot of times, again, one times multiple. Because they're like, I want to stop working and that's how much I can get because it's a job. Now, if you have a big thing with many offices and you're not the CEO and all these things, then yeah, maybe you can get a 3X, 4X, something like that. In fact, there was a, a big deal. Um, there's a massive, massive company called KKR and they do this for a living. It's a billion, billions, billions of dollars. And this is I heard about the story. Actually, Brandon Dawson shared this story. And he said there was a guy and he bought a few chiropractic offices or dental offices or something like that. And he put them all together. And he said, here's one management. They all do the same program and it's all managed. Then they sold it to some private equity firm, right? For like seven times multiple, something like that. Five times multiple, forget. Because what happens is they, the one person said, I'm going to put it under one roof. And he bought like 10% of each of the companies and said, hey, when we sell, we get, I don't know, some deal, some venture capitalist, some something had a smart way of buying pieces of it, putting it under a roof and then reselling it. That did very well. And all these businesses, uh, chiropractors, dental offices, whatever it was. I think it was chiropractors. No, no, no. It was dental offices. And they flipped, sold to one company. Okay, that did great. And it continued to grow. Then that company sold to another company for like seven times the multiple. And then KKR came in and then KKR bought it, I want to say for $2.1 billion at something like a 10 times multiple. It was so solid, so strong. They said, if we pay 10 times profit, they're going to make 10%. They cannot make 10% anywhere. Mortgage companies, they go out and loan out money. Well, not right now. Right now, I don't know what it's 8%, 9%. I don't know what you get a mortgage at right now. But in, in times when the interest rate is not high, a mortgage company is making 4.5%, 5%, maybe 6% on some loans. That's a lot of work to make that. KQR says, I buy this one deal one time and I want to make 10% on it as long as it doesn't go down. If they trust and they know how to make it not go down, they're going to make 10% of the money, which is which is pretty nice. And then if they grow it, they keep making there. So this this industry is just so massive, guys. And, and honestly, I've also made some bad purchases. Again, it's all small ones. Um, two small ones that I could think of that are like 100 grand. And 
eh, it didn't work out. One is kind of being revived right now. And the other one, we kind of like, it's not worth it. We pretty much dropped it. So can that happen? Yes. Now, if that was my only business, could I turn around? Of course. I know I could I could turn around a company for a hundred for a hundred a hundred thousand dollar valuation company, but it's gonna take a lot of time. And then to, if you double it, it's like for me, it's not it hasn't been totally worth it to put all my time into that. And so, but if you're buying a company at a hundred thousand, and that's what you're gonna work on day in day out, and you know how to grow things, then you should have a fantastic time. And so you could do that, and then you add product lines, and it just gives you a little bit of a start. I have been burned on so many investment opportunities, Ponzi schemes crypto which to me they're not that all that much different anyway here's the thing i've gotten burned over and over so i wanted to create a vehicle for accredited investors to put their money in a place that has a huge potential upside and a low possibility of a downside that is our fund go to aaroncordovas.com slash invest to find out if it's right for you hey if you've been on amazon you have success it must have come into your mind to see how much is my business worth? How much could I sell it for today? If you want to get a valuation from us, we know what is very valuable in Amazon companies. Go to aaroncordovas.com slash valuation and we will tell you what we would buy it for. And if we put an offer, we close. We will close cash up front and a huge back end for you to get money as the brand continues to grow. aaroncordovas.com slash valuation. So people ask me, should I buy an Amazon brand or should I start an Amazon brand? I think the answer is start one first. Get the idea. Okay, check out my, my course, right? AaronCardovas.com slash start. Okay. And I have a, another course. I'm starting a brand from zero right now, documenting everything. That's going to come out. You'll get it. If you sign up for my, my, my uh, free course right now, you'll get that one as well in your email when it comes out. Now, start a brand from zero, go through the process, learn all the pain in the butts to like open the account, get your, your trademark approved, list the product, import, do all the stuff and learn it. So you have an idea of what it is. Do your first launch. Oh my gosh, it didn't sell. It did sell this pricing. Learn all that stuff. And once, or, or work in a company. Like if you want to come and work at our company, apply. Okay. Careers at Zulai.net. Okay. Uh, you can apply. All right. Move here. Come here to Florida. Work with us. Okay, good. We'll see. You know, obviously, we're not going to hire everybody, but you can apply. But work at a company that sells on Amazon. Learn the ads. Learn the sourcing. Learn the stuff. Provide value. And when you learn that skill, either working at a company or starting it yourself, and you learn it well, then, okay, put together your life savings. Put together, uh, uh, not your life savings. Put together whatever you can put together. A hundred grand. Three hundred grand. 50 grand. So if you go to flippa.com, Empire Flippers, there's companies selling for 40 grand, 50 grand. Might be a good purchase, might not be. But I don't know. Like, we'll see. But I, I know, man, I know a guy who took all his life savings in this and put money into like BitConnect, which is a crypto thing, and lost $300,000. A person who's a lot of that was loaned in this and like they lost everything. Okay. That's the, worst, that's the worst that can happen? You lose all your money? Okay, cool. Well, you have another chance and you learn something. So if you buy a company, learn something from it, your chances of doing that are infinitely higher than the crypto or this or some whatever these random ass things that happen. So, yeah, okay. Yeah, I, I've lost money. My, my first thing, I, you know, I bought some courses was like $2,000, $2, $3,000, lost all the money. Okay, cool. Next, like <laughs> my life is not ruined right now. I was able to sustain that and move forward. So, um, I think you want to make a company or a brand or work in some, on someone else's brand and learn how to grow that. And if you learn that skill, then you can go in and buy in into a brand. That would be the way that I would do it. And otherwise, I think buying is fantastic. And uh, again, uh, if you go to my website, aaroncardovas.com slash exit, you want to sell your brand, benefits of selling your brand. I just wrote a post about that as well. You get all your cash. You do have no risk. You don't have to be like stressing on it. And more importantly, you get a big sum of cash. You can go and start another brand even bigger, even better, or whatever else you want to do. Some people want to go into different industries. Go for it, right? Um, so many benefits in selling. You can check it out if you want to sell your Amazon brand. We're looking really for either kitchen-based uh, products, uh, almost of any profit level-ish, if it's kitchen, or above $1 million in EBITDA or net income. Uh, net profit. Okay, so 
apply there. And if you'd like to invest and buy alongside us uh, for accredited investors only, um, check it out, aaroncardovas.com slash invest. So check that out. And yeah, I'm just here talking about buying companies. Like you buy it on your own, that's fantastic. Because there is brands and there is... Oh, the number one thing people ask is like, why is that person selling the brand? Look, guys, there's there's so many reasons. So many reasons. They're done with it. Some people get tired. I'm tired of the brand. I don't want to deal with it anymore. Some people say, hey, I just want to cash. I want cash. I want to put it in some stocks or something and I want to just live on that passive income. Okay, cool. Uh, some people say, well, I want to go sell it so I can buy a house. Okay, cool. Uh, I want to sell it. Uh, because me and my partners and my friends and we all, I don't know, we kind of hate each other when we fight so much. Okay, cool. Like, it's someone wanting to sell their company doesn't mean the company's doing poorly. It does not mean the company's doing poorly. It just means that they want to sell. Like, I don't know. If you're selling your car, does that mean it's a bad car? No, did I sold, I sold my Prius. I had a 2012, 2012 Prius. I love that car to death. I loved it. It had like amazing mileage. And then some people would make fun of me. I was like, I'm making all this money. I'm driving my Prius. And I'm like, dude, the thing is like 50, 60 miles per gallon. Uh, I just kind of liked it. I, Toyota's good. It's never given me any problems. Yeah, it doesn't have a lot of like speed. But like, dude, we all, well, you, you're not going to go past whatever X. On your normal, ba- normal day, you're going like 45 miles an hour. Or you're going on the highway like 60, maybe 70, 75. Like, it'll go there. I'm not going to go 120 miles on a Prius, but that's okay. I don't need to. So I sold my Prius and the person got a great deal. Is it because the Prius was a bad car? No, dude. The Prius is a fantastic car. It was a plug-in. I got like 11 miles on electric. And, um, dude, I love my car. And I sold it. So what? Like, why do you want to sell it? Because it's going to break down? No, it's because, okay, I was going to buy another car. I'm going to move into the next deal. I'm going to take that car. And then from that, I bought my Model 3. And then, okay, cool. I had a Toyota Corolla 2. I sold that one. Like, oh, why did you sell it? Okay. Like, people selling their companies is a somewhat of a normal thing. And it happens, especially in the in the in the trajectory of a person's entire lifespan. If you are a that's why they call it a serial entrepreneur. You're getting businesses, you're buying them or making them, and then you sell it. It's like a big payday. That's kind of it's a for profit business. So you do something, you make some profit, and like you want to cash out. And then you can go make a new business. Some people take like a hiatus and they go take a break for a few years, which I think is you could if you want to. I don't know. I haven't really had some itch to like, I'm going to go on a beach and go lay down. No, I, I don't know. I go lay down on the beach on the weekend or I'll do it. Like maybe I'll go take a little vacation or something. But do I want to do that for like a year? No, man, that sounds sounds like I'm, I'm, I'm missing on the, all the action and all the fun. So uh, anyway, that's what I was talking about, uh, talking about acquisitions. Another thing is people ask like, well, how do you know the company will keep growing or how do you know it's not going to crash or this? And I go, listen, you don't. I mean, we're on planet Earth right now. A bomb could go and like all business could be gone. Okay, cool. Y- 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 there's no guarantee that you're this. There's not gonna. We're not gonna be bombed tomorrow. There's no guarantee, but uh, we keep going anyway. Okay. Hopefully, it doesn't happen. Cool. Uh, well, well, you know what? It ho- what if there's a uh, I don't know, uh, a tariff on Chinese goods like three hundred percent or something? Okay. Well, if that happens, cool. We have a lot of inventory here, and then. Yeah, the whole market will raise their prices and then people will move factories and import to Mexico and Mexico to here. And there's so many things that will happen. So, okay, cool. What other scenarios? There's so many things people you could think of. What if um, there's an account suspension or something? Okay. The, the account suspension, Amazon is very good with if you don't really break rules, they don't mess with you. And someone can frame you, but it is very, 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 very hard to frame somebody probably impossible because Amazon is a brilliant they are so these guys are they think more about suspensions and fraud than you do why I'll give you an example um we ha- I wish I had the card here we got a letter in the postcard and we got a postcard in the mail for a product that we bought and it was a, it was a competitor product that we bought to see what they were like we got a postcard in the mail and said hey leave a five star review on this product, go to your thing, leave a five-star review on this product, our competitor. And we will give you a free lamp, a free something, a free $25 gift card, one of these things. You send us the review, send the review to this email, a Gmail account, and we'll give you blah. Okay. We got that reported to Amazon. The person will never get, did not get shut down. Why? If you look at it, why would they not get shut down? This postcard... I could have shipped a postcard 
to a customer pretending to be my competitor. You see? Anybody can do that. Like, I can say, take a, a here's a, here's a, um, let's just say, who, am I, who am I going to use? I'll use Breville, okay? Let's say I wanted to take Breville down on Amazon. I can make a postcard. I could probably buy some lists somewhere of, like, customers that have bought from Breville. Or I'll just ship to some of us. We probably have some some guys that bought from me. They'll probably have a low overlap in people. And say, hey, go to your order history. Find Breville. Leave a five-star review. And email me. And I could even say, email me at, like, reviews at breville.com. N- nobody will answer from there. I could just put that email. So, like, oh, it's Breville because they put the email. Well, I mail that out to 10,000 customers. Breville gets reported. Guess what happens? Breville won't be taken down. Now, why? Amazon cannot verify that that was Breville doing it. It could be a competitor. And so the one that I got, I'm, I guess, 98% sure it was the actual competitor, not someone trying to frame them. But how does Amazon actually know? And that's why these accounts don't get shut down. Otherwise, it'd be way too easy. Someone could just send that postcard. They put Zulai on it. They put whatever, and then we'd be shut down. So this is not a reason to do it Okay, just because you won't get caught. Because you know what? You're the second you do stuff like that, you're stopping to focus on actual product quality. You're stopping to focus on your customer. And you're taking a shortcut. This is like a get rich quick thing. You do enough of those, then the real reviews come in there bad, you're gonna be down. So what why are you doing that instead of spending the time to make your product better, make your advertising better, and actually just get real honest reviews? Like that's what you should do. So don't do this shady stuff that I mean I, I it still happens a lot. If they put it in their product, that's different, okay? Because that's an insert inside the product packaging, and then people get shut down and they say you have to remove the inventory. But there, they can verify it because they can see who shipped this inventory into Amazon, and they see you did it, you said your shipment, and it goes in. So for that, people get shut down and get reviews wiped and all that kind of stuff. Okay, because that's shady. They can verify you did it. When the postcard method, right? People buy uh, uh, the information of their orders from some service, and they send out postcards, it's untraceable because it could be framed. That's all I'm saying. So back to say it. Amazon uses a lot of reason and a lot of actual judgment to say this person will be shut down or they will not be shut down. Can the person have been framed? And if the answer is yes, then they won't shut it down. So I've not seen unjust large companies get shut down on Amazon. Have not happened. Has not happened. I, I have not seen it. I, I know of a few people that have been suspended um, because of shady stuff they were doing. Giveaways. I don't know. 500 giveaways a day. What are you going to do? Okay. Amazon finds out somehow and they're going to shut you down. Like, you do shady stuff, you'll get shut down. But otherwise, suspensions, I have not seen it happen on Amazon. Other platforms can be ruthless and crazy and they haven't learned and they do whatever. Amazon, there's a great appeal process. Sometimes they take a while. And yes, sometimes they will shut down honest people or honest products for a short period of time, but you come back. They're largely responsible for your entire success. So, okay, don't, you know, fine. Amazon made a mistake and shut down one of our products for a week. Okay, cool. Like, yes, I can complain about it. I can be unhappy. But at the end of the day, um, our business is there largely in part to Amazon. So, like, okay. Look, nobody, your, your parents are not perfect. Your spouse is not perfect. Uh, Amazon is not perfect. We're on planet Earth. Welcome to planet Earth. Okay. Buying companies is awesome. Um, I think it's a great way to not necessarily learn because I think learning is better if you can do it on your own or working for somebody. But if you have some basics, buying companies is a great option. And of course, investing is a great option um, in people who you trust. So, all right, guys. Peace out. Hope this is helpful. Uh... And not just Amazon, guys. You can buy companies in the service industry, product industry, uh, real estate, and anything. Buying is super cool. A lot of times, it's a win-win for people. So uh, that's all I got for today. Peace. All right, guys. So that is the end of this episode. I would appreciate it big time if you left me a review on Apple Podcasts, if you subscribed on YouTube, on Instagram, on LinkedIn, wherever you have social media, follow me because I love to share things and I do it for you guys. I do it for your improve it for things that I will share. Okay, I've been lucky enough to listen to mentors that have done amazing things and shared with me how they did it. And sometimes you might need it in a different a different message. You might listen to from a person like me. I'm not some superstar crazy person on TV doing whatever. Like, I don't know. Just a dude who did pretty good in business. So if that's something you guys like, this is all free. This podcast is free. My YouTube channel is free. 
So how you can give back is share it with someone who could, it could maybe change their life. Maybe they can make a decision in business. Maybe they could, any, any way that we can help, if you share it with somebody, if you like it, that does a tremendous, tremendous amount of help for me. So I appreciate it, guys.